my name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman & Associates. As you may know, our firm has a primary focus on family law. Uh, if you have any questions about that or any topics you'd like us to go over, you want to see what videos we've already done, of course, please subscribe to our channel. One of our members of our viewing audience asked, I'm a stay-at-home mom for over 10 years. Can my spouse pay for my attorney fees in a divorce? Well, it's an interesting question, but I think really what it means is, must my spouse be uh, pay for my attorney fees, or can the spouse be ordered to pay my attorney fees? You have to understand one thing. The court's going to start out with the proposition that everybody pays their own way. So you might wonder, well, I have a work. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Where am I going to get the money? Well, the answer is, number one, if they're marital assets, I'm sure your spouse is paying his lawyer out of marital assets. You can do likewise. That's number one. Number two, a lot of times what people do is they go to friends and family in order to initiate divorce proceedings if they don't have any money. Uh, number three, they borrow the money by use of credit cards or some other such thing. Um, you know, you have to understand that uh, it is possible for the court to order that an attorney fee order in a divorce. It is possible that the court will order at that, that uh, some reimbursement be made to you if you borrowed money from parents to start your divorce and he had used some marital funds and you didn't. The court may very well order that. But in most cases, the court will order uh, attorney fees to be reimbursed at the end. At the end of the case, once the court sees whether or not there's actually money to pay it. So the problem with that is, yes, you may get some attorney fee money, but you might not get it till the end and what are you going to do right now? You're going to be obligated to pay for your lawyer. Your lawyer is not going to agree to represent you and give you all the service on the theory that some guy at the end might reimburse for it and pay his bill. It ain't going to work that way. It's not realistic. You need to expect to pay your own bills. You need to go to friends and family or use credit cards or use marital assets to pay those bills. If the court orders some reimbursement at the end, beautiful. You'll get it back. If not, You'll, you'll have to have paid your bill just like um, your ex paid his bill. Now you can say, well, he used marital money to pay for it. How come I don't get the benefit of that? And the answer is, at the end of the day, you will get the benefit of that because your attorneys are going to calculate what marital assets he spent and they're going to take it off his side of the ledger, not yours. But in a situation, for example, where there are no assets to divide, where the parties sort of live check to check and they really haven't accumulated much. He's working at a job, making an hourly wage. You're not because you're taking care of three kids. What are you going to do that? Well, the court's not likely to order him to pay it because he doesn't have money to pay his own bills. So in that scenario, you can expect that you're probably going to have to rely on friends and family to pay those bills. Lawyers are like any other business people. They're not going to give you the service on, on an if come on, without a guarantee of how they're going to be paid any more so than would ABC Warehouse give you a big screen TV without knowing how it's going to be paid. You know, lawyers are doing this um, as the practice of law. This is their profession. Uh, it's also the way they pay their bills. So you have to realize that in a situation like this, where do you go? Let's say there's no money. There's no way to do it. How do you do it? Well, you may be eligible for some discount legal services. You may be eligible through the Bar Association, through their pro bono programs to try and seek out um, uh, through the Bar Association lawyers who have been willing, express willingness to do some work on a pro bono basis. Uh, on a limited basis, we do that here at the firm as well. But that's very, very specific circumstance. The general rule is going to be if you're just a homemaker um, and you're trying to get divorced and trying to figure out how to pay for it, you're going to have to tap into your own resources uh, or friends and family or Visa MasterCard or some way so that you can finance it just like you'd have to find a way to pay for a needed surgery if you didn't have health insurance or any necessity where there's not a fund out of which to pay. If you have any questions about that, of course, call now and we'll be glad to give you further guidance in that regard.